My name is uh, Bernhard Geiler. I'm a uh, research assistant uh, at the OTH Amberg Biden. And I want to do a little workshop on tools and workflow for the development of interactive Chase XGraph applets in a Moodle course. And the outline um, first, I want to talk a little bit about the project uh, where I work. It's called Ideal. Um, maybe some of you who attended the first day uh, remember the talk given by Stefan Bach and Johannes Knaut. Uh, whom, um, they are my co-workers here and they already presented the project and our use of JSX graph. But I want to go a little bit more into a developer's perspective. I want to talk about um, the options, how to use JSX graph in a Moodle course and um, also about the problems we were facing with the uh, text editors in Moodle. And then um, we took it a step further and um, looked at some other development tools outside of Moodle. I want to present then two tools. And then I want to show our best practice, so to say, for developing JSX graph applets in um, our Moodle course. And then comes the real workshop part um, where I want to show how we develop uh, an applet on complex numbers and show you all the steps we take and the tools we use. Okay, so first uh, the project IDEAL, it's uh, short for um, Innovationsnetzwerk für Digitale Adaptive Lehre, uh, which translates to Innovation Network for Digital Adaptive Teaching. And there we develop um, adaptive learning modules uh, on STEM uh, subjects inside of Moodle. And we have a first uh, course already um, running, which is um, on the topic of complex numbers. And those learning modules, they can be uh, integrated, for example, into lectures um, in order for the students to have some additional exercise opportunities. And from a technical point of view, we use um, Stack, which is a Moodle question type. I hope um, or think most of you will know Stack, but it's basically um, a question type where you have a, a computer algebra system um, in the back end, uh, evaluating your answers or the answers the students give. And we use that uh, in combination with Chase XGraph in those learning modules. And Chase XGraph is used for, for dynamic visualizations in our stack questions and also in test descriptions, like you can see here on the right hand side, you have uh, descriptions for those tests. And then we have already here some playful applets uh, that the students can get kind of a grasp what is going on then in the in the chapter and what they will learn about. Okay, so much to the to the project. Now I want to talk a little bit about the um, integration of JSX graph in Moodle. So basically there are two options how you can include applets in um, Moodle, uh, there is the Moodle Chase X graph filter, which is a plugin for Moodle. And then um, it's also possible to use Chase X graph within Stack. So Chase X graph is already included if you have Stack running on your Moodle system. And for our self-learning course, we use both of these options. And uh, if you want to develop an applet, um, you have to include it into a Chase X graph block which uh, is the case in stack questions or outside of stack questions, you use um, a JSX graph tag for the Moodle filter. And this uh, looks like that. So you have um, the JSX graph block here or a tag where you basically just um, put the, the um, width and height of your applet and then the code uh, goes in between. And this code um, is written or developed using one of the Moodle editors. And I want to talk about those editors now and the problems we uh, were facing or are still facing. So in Moodle, there are three main editors to choose from. Uh, it's the um, Atto HTML editor, tiny MCE HTML editor, and the plain text editor, which basically is just the input field. Where you can type in plain text. And Regarding stack for authoring stack questions with Chase X graph applets um, inside of them, uh, the use of the so-called what you see is what you get um, editors 
those are the first two here, um, is not recommended because this can easily break uh, the question or the applets because sometimes um, if you switch to the what you see is what you get view, then uh, some spans may be inserted and break the code. So it is recommended to use the plain text editor and this is what we do in our project. But this also comes with some drawbacks as you can already see here, I included a screenshot. Um, when we are developing such an uh, applet, we include it here with the JSX graph tag and then comes the code. And this is basically just plain text and has no real syntax highlighting, uh, also no static code checking and um, a live preview also isn't possible. So you have to save the question and then go into preview mode. And it can be really cumbersome to uh, try to debug something or spot a mistake. So these problems make developing Chase XGraph applets more difficult than they than it actually should be. Um, and this was the, the point where we started thinking about other development tools maybe that we can use uh, to facilitate the development process of uh, applets. So uh, we looked at um, other tools and there are many. Um, uh, I just wanna show two tools we decided to use in our project, uh, namely these are uh, JS Fiddle and uh, Visual Studio Code. So JS Fiddle, just um, a quick overview. This is a browser-based uh, IDE environment for web development, where you can create some uh, code snippets and run them and have direct output. And this uh, looks like this here. So you have a JavaScript uh, panel where you can um, put all the script in. And then here's the HTML and the applet then um, is here in the preview mode. Um, so I can also uh, quickly show you this. Um, I don't know if you can see my browser should work. Um, perfect. And uh, this is, for example, here a, a simple applet I developed using JS Fiddle. And as you already can see, um, there's syntax highlighting. If I type something and forget, uh, for example, um, uh, there's an additional uh, comma. I get the, um, here uh, a warning or maybe an error and I see this immediately. And this uh, is really useful. And also I have direct output here, what I am programming. So this makes Chase Fiddle a, a very good um, tool to develop Chase XGraph applets and also uh, share them with your workmates because you can easily send them a link so it's really useful for, for testing some Chase X graph constructions you make, developing applets, and also share them online, for example, on Stack Overflow. It's very popular to provide um, a Chase Fiddle example. And the other tool uh, we are using, um, basically also for, for the Chase X graph development, is VS Code, Visual Studio Code. And this is um, a source code editor from Microsoft comes with basic support for HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and has many useful features. Um, static code checking, syntax highlighting. Um, well, it's, um, if you can say, uh, a very popular editor in the developer community, so to say, and it has very uh, different uh, possibilities. You can also extend it um, with extensions, we, for example, use, uh, use uh, an extension called Live Preview, um, which enables us for the HTML file where we develop the applet to immediately see, okay, um, here's the output and uh, it has an auto refresh when we change something. And this makes developing uh, the applet um, by far more easy than uh, with the Moodle uh, plain text editor. And also, uh, 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 another point is the Git integration, which is possible in uh, Visual Studio Code. So you can have version control, which is also very uh, nice to have. So it's very useful for developing uh, advanced uh, Chase XGraph applets and include version control um, if you like. And um, you have the possibility to, um, to develop those applets uh, using an HTML file. Whereas in JS Fiddle, you just have 
those code snippets. So this is um, a little bit better suited for development in our project, uh, so to say. But we use both tools and um, we also use a template, which is part of, let's say, our best practice for developing uh, JSX graph applets. And this template, um, we decided to create uh, our own template and it is, includes uh, code for a board with um, axis and already a point. And it is uh, structured. Uh, so provides a structure for inserting code. So you know, okay, first we have some options which we define and those are always the same options. Uh, and this also ensures that um, every developer's applets uh, have the same look and you can quickly understand what another developer did if you're um, viewing the source code of an applet. And this is quite helpful. Um, we also um, have uh, a GitHub where we have this template and I want to show you this, how this uh, looks like. Um, so this is this is here the template now already um, hosted on GitHub as a HTML file. Um, so it has some boilerplate code um, essentially, um, which we often use. So we don't have to define the axes um, every time and we always have the same layout. Um, yeah, and I can also go into the source code um, here. So you can see um, we have here this template and we have different sections and we decided, okay, variables, they always go here. Here's our board, um, how we define it. And the functions are always in this block. So this makes, um, makes um, maintaining the code easier and gives a clear structure to, uh, to developing those applets. Um, yeah. And now all comes together in our workflow. This is how we go on to develop JSX graph applets in our project, in our team. So we first start with the idea for an applet. And then um, we take um, our template as basis, code basis. Sometimes we already um, have some ideas we want to test with JS Fiddle. Um, and then we can take those snippets from JS Fiddle and um, include them in this template. And the main development, um, we use uh, the Visual Studio code here and also have um, a GitLab project, uh, which is running on the university server where we um, have version control. And then the final step is, uh, we copy the code because, well, uh, Visual Studio Code has no um, native integration to, uh, to Moodle. So we copy the code, make some, uh, some changes, and then um, paste it into the, the plain text editor mm, and save the question. So to sum up JS Fiddle and, and VS Code, those tools, um, they improve uh, the developer experience when programming with JSX Graph. And the use of a template with some boilerplate code also allows you to quickly focus on the idea for your applet and also ensures a consistent layout for all applets. And now we're coming to the workshop part where we want to develop an, such an applet. And there I will focus on this part here. So we start with the idea for an applet and then we will use this template. I will show you how we use this template. Um, use it in VS Code and then develop an applet. And I chose an applet on um, uh, visualizing Euler's formula. This is an applet from our self-learning course on complex numbers. And well, we always start with an idea and here the idea, um, there's an image from Wikipedia, which uh, illustrates uh, Euler's formula quite, uh, quite nicely, I think. And then we think, okay, how can we make an, an applet um, out of this so that it um, looks then like this and also has some interactivity where students can, um, can interact with the applet. So um, now I wanna show you how we go on to develop this applet. And if you wanna follow along, you have basically um, some options. You can um, now uh, 
use this link here, which I will, um, oh, sorry, uh, put in the in the chat, which um, basically um, has a JS fiddle with our template already included. So you can follow along uh, what I will code now. And you can also, if you have Visual Studio Code, um, you can also use this with the live preview extension. I will explain it uh, shortly and use uh, our template from the, from the um, GitHub. So now I will post those links into the chat. Um, one second. Um, here, okay, first is, it's um, JS Fiddle. It's probably the, the easier um, way to follow along now. And then if you already have Visual Studio Code and want to follow along, you can also um, start with the, the Moodle uh, template. Um, and I will now head uh, to VS Code. So I'm here in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, I already have here this file start HTML. Uh, this includes this, um, this template. And this should also be um, in the JS Fiddle where I provided the link. This should look basically more or less the same. It's a fiddle which has the, the starting uh, code here inside and shows you here the output. But I will use now um, Visual Studio Code. And in order to have here the direct output of my code, I use a extension called live server um, or, oh, excuse me, not live server, a live preview. You can lose, use live server too. And this is actually what we did before, but I think live preview is a little bit more convenient. So this, um, this extension here, um, if you use it, you have, as you can see here, um, direct output of an HTML file and auto refresh. So if you change something, you can directly see what is going on. And this is really, really useful. So um, as we don't have too much time left now, I will, um, I don't, won't go into detail on every line of code and will post some or use some snippets, but I'll explain what I'll do uh, so that you can follow along. And also um, when we're finished developing this applet, um, I will post another link with a fiddle where we have the finished version so that you can um, uh, look what, uh, what I did then here. Um, okay, so first off, um, how do we now develop this applet? on uh, Euler's formula. Okay, so I'm um, first of all, we wanna make it here a little bit smaller so that it um, fits better into our test description. And then um, basically here, those options, those stay the same for our applets in, in the self-learning course. So I can leave that as it is. Variables here, I don't need them, but um, I when, when I need them, I can already, um, define a variable here, but it's not important for this, uh, for this workshop uh, as of now. So I can uh, delete this. And then um, also um, event listeners and functions. Uh, we don't need it for this applet, so I can remove this too. Um, and then I have to make some adjustments on, on the board here, on the, uh, on the bounding box. So we make it a little bit, a little bit smaller. Um, minus 1.5, 2, 2, and minus 1.5. Uh, so with that, we have some space on the right-hand side also to later include the um, symbolic representation of uh, Euler's formula. And then the grid can be set to false. Uh, perfect. And now we see with some some minor tweaks on the code. We already have um, something which would well have taken about 10, 15 minutes uh, if we would all have to code it from, from scratch. So that is, that is already quite, uh, quite useful and um, shows the power of, uh, of using uh, such templates. And now uh, we come to the JSX graph elements. Well, we start off with a circle or well, maybe just 
we look at the axis first because we're in a course on complex numbers. So it's not necessarily the X and Y axis, but we have a real and imaginary part. Um, so we use um, some LaTeX code here for the, the real and the imaginary part. I will just paste it in here. Um, and now you see, okay, those labels are a little bit off. So we have to adjust a little bit the positioning here. We do this with the offset attribute so that it um, looks a little bit better here. And okay, perfect. And now for the imaginary part. Um, so this is always uh, a little bit try and error to see uh, the, the perfect uh, perfect offset. I already did it, so I know the values, but you can uh, play with it a bit until you think it's good enough. So perfect. Now we have the axis labeled, and then we start with our JSX graph elements. And there we start with a circle. I'm just gonna post here or paste the snippet, um, which is basically um, a circle with the radius of one. And we set the highlight to false, fix true, so that it can't be dragged around. Then some additional attributes. Okay, and here we set um, opacity so that it's um, a little bit um, less black, um, but you can also use a color gray, for example. It depends um, what you wanna do. And then um, on the circle, we need uh, a point to drag around or a, a, a point to um, represent the complex number. So therefore we use a glider on the circle. We create it with uh, the glider element, which is basically a point tied to the circle here and set the color to orange and then uh, say with label true. So, um, the name we give the point is uh, automatically uh, generated as a label. And there we have some LaTeX code in it to, um, to label this uh, complex number, which is uh, called set here. And then also we can um, here change the offset or um, make adjustments to the, to the positioning with the anchor, but this should be um, good as of now. And then next, because we typically in those um, scenarios, we don't want to represent complex numbers with uh, points, but with, with pointers. So we um, create a segment from the origin to this point. And we then uh, use the last arrow property here to um, make this an arrow. So now we have this pointer which can be dragged around using the glider. Um, there are, I'm sure there are other ways to do this. Um, and this is one of the, in my opinion, very useful uh, and cool features of JSX Graph that uh, there's not just only one way to achieve it. You can be really creative, um, but this approach uh, worked for us. So now we're, uh, we have this and we wanna move on uh, to the angle. And for the angle phi, um, basically you define an angle using three points. Mm, so I'm missing two points and I'm gonna put them here. Those are two points, but I set them visible to false because they are just needed for the angle to be created here. Um, and then here, this is my angle. Um, what create angle, and then I create it with those two points and the glider element. So now we have this angle here. And what we did in order to show the direction of the angle, um, we included a, a little arrow. Um, this arrow can be made by accessing the arc uh, attribute, set it visible true. And then um, there's, uh, there is a last arrow attribute we can set so that we have here this uh, little arrow, which looks uh, quite nice. And then we also want to label label this uh, angle. And therefore, although we could uh, do this just by saying uh, with label true, this would automatically generate a label, but we decided we want to 
label inside of the angle that also stays inside. And uh, if we follow here, we drag it around. So we decided to make, let's say, custom custom label um, here, which is essentially just a point um, with the size zero that has itself a label. And for the position, we provided some error functions, which dynamically uh, calculate the position so that it stays inside here. Um, okay, perfect. Um, I'm just gonna set with label here to false again. And now have to move on to the sine and cosine. So basically the, the coordinates of the, of the complex number. So therefore we create a point and a segment and the point here, first for the, for the cosine of the angle phi, uh, the point we set the size to zero. Um, so you don't see the point, but we um, need it in order for the label here and the segment to be uh, correctly placed. And the segment here, we create it with the attribute dash. So it has this dashed line uh, to indicate, okay, that's now here the, the cosine on the, on the axis for the real part of this complex number. And basically the same as we do for the cosine, we do for the sine. And I'm gonna, paste it in now. So it's it's basically the same logic, uh, but here for the coordinate of the point, um, we have the the x-axis or here real uh, real part of the number is, is zero and then um, y-axis here imaginary part, um, we calculate with the sign of the angle value, which we access with phi dot value. And now um, we have this, visualization and to see, we can already uh, drag it around and see that it, um, that it yeah, looks, looks already quite nice, but what is missing now is the formula. And this was also something uh, Stefan Bach and Johannes Knaut talked about on um, Tuesday. So in our project, we aim to, to place graphical representation and the, the symbolic uh, representation near to uh, each other so that the students um, can directly link those two forms of representation. And therefore we wanna just create a text label or a text element, which comes here on top. And for that, okay, um, I have the, the whole string. This is a little bit, uh, more LaTeX code here, which is essentially just the formula. And we um, made use of um, colors here in LaTeX, um, which is quite nice so that we can uh, color the different uh, parts of, uh, of the formula. And also another thing, which is interesting here, I can quickly delete this. So you see, this would be the normal output of the text. But in our project, we decided to have a CSS class for text um, or especially formulas we want to display. So we called this ideal JSX graph text box, and this um, automatically sets some CSS styling. And then it looks quite nice here. And what is interesting here about um, this element, I can uh, zoom in and drag around, but it stays in the same position. And therefore we use the attribute frozen true, um, which makes sure that, for example, if um, you wanna zoom in and just look at the um, angle between zero and 90 degrees here, you um, still have the formula present. So do you uh, always have the formula and the graphical representation tied together, so to say. Yeah, and then uh, the applet is done. This was now a little bit um, faster than it would usually be because I have those uh, snippets prepared. But essentially, if you would um, 
code this in Moodle. I can just quickly show you where we have implemented it. Well, this would look like this. And coding here versus coding in Visual Studio Code is a lot more easy, a lot more, um, yeah, developer friendly, so to say. And also here, if I make uh, a mistake, for example, forget something, okay, I get the error message um, or, um, Okay, there's a comma expected. I added perfect. It now works, and this is pos is not possible with the plain text editor. So those are the the benefits uh, from this. What uh, challenges we are st still facing here is that we uh, have the problem that we still have to copy this code and paste it into Moodle, and then we have to make some minor changes. For example, um, here the ID for the diff. Um, if we use stack, that this has to be the diff ID. And this is something we have to do, but um, nevertheless, using this template and using Visual Studio Code with the live preview, this is our workflow. And this helps us um, develop JSX graph applets more efficiently as it would be possible with the Moodle editor. Okay, so now we have finished this workshop, this little workshop. And I will provide the link to the JS Fiddle with the finished code in the chat. And then I say thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.